I have a question for you. Do you actually practice watercolor warm-ups before you sit down to create a painting? Be honest. Because if you're not practicing watercolor warm-ups, then you're missing out on a great opportunity to develop better hand-eye coordination, to develop muscle memory, and to improve your water control skills. So in this video, I'm showing you how to do some easy watercolor warm-up exercises by following a simple step-by-step -step process. All the links to the art supplies are in the description box below. In my opinion, the best watercolor warm-up is to practice different kinds of brush strokes. First, use a medium round brush and load up your brush with a pigment of your choice. Start by creating a bunch of thin lines next to one another. Make sure to apply light pressure onto your brush and focus on using the tip of your brush to make the lines as thin as possible. Paint a dozen of these lines quickly and loosely, and don't overthink the painting process. Next, move on to the second row and start painting medium brush strokes. To do this, apply a moderate amount of pressure to the belly of your brush to create brush strokes that are medium in size. That means these brush strokes are thicker and bigger than the first row of thin brush strokes. Now move on to the third row where you'll paint thick brush strokes. To do this, apply firm pressure onto the belly of the brush so that the bristles fan out quite a bit, thus creating thicker lines. These brush strokes will take up the most space, and so go ahead and paint tons of these lines side by side until you fill up the third row. Now that you're comfortable painting thin, medium, and thick brush strokes, it's time to paint some waves. So load up your brush with more pigment and then start at one side of the paper. Create a steady wave across the paper by moving the brush in a gentle up and down motion. The line should be painted in one long fluid motion with curves going up and dips going down. Repeat this step three times so that on three different rows you have painted a thin wave, a medium wave, and a thick wave. Remember that this is a warm-up, so these brush strokes should be loose, and if they turn out somewhat messy, that's totally okay, because we are not aiming for perfection. Let's do another warm-up exercise so that we can practice more dynamic brush strokes. Now we'll be painting seekers. First, grab your medium round brush and load it up with some pigment. Then, use light pressure on the brush and focus on using the tip of the bristles to paint a ton of C-curves side by side one another on the paper. Each line should be curved and it should look like a delicate blade of grass. Next, you're going to paint a row of medium C-curves. To do this, apply medium pressure to your brush. Because you're using more pressure this time, the brush strokes should be thicker and therefore the C-curves will look similar to the shape of bananas. Next, you're going to paint a row of thick C-curves. To do this, apply firm pressure onto the brush and paint with the belly of the brush to create a third row of C-curves. Now, these brush strokes are going to be very thick and bold, so in a way, the lines will look like plump jumbo shrimp. Well, that's what they look like to me. Now that you're comfortable painting various brush strokes, let's move on to painting textures. Let's start with the cross-hatching texture. First, load up your medium round brush with some pigment. You're going to start off by painting a row of diagonal lines. Use medium pressure on your brush to create lines that are balanced and roughly equal in size. Create a whole row of these diagonal lines and then use medium pressure to paint the same set of lines but this time you will paint them diagonally in the opposite direction so that they cross over the first set of lines that you painted. Good job! Now let's create a stipple texture by using the stippling technique. First, load up your brush with some pigment and then hold your brush vertically. The goal is to use the fine tip of the bristles to paint dozens and dozens of small dots next to one another. Then, move your brush across the paper to create a stippled rectangle. 
To do this, make sure the stipples are roughly the same size, and it's important that the dots should be tightly packed next to one another. That being said, make sure to leave at least some white space so that there's breathing room for the texture to show through the pigment. Now let's create a dab texture by using the dabbing technique. To do this, put some pressure on the brush and dab the bristles randomly on the paper. You want to create clusters of small paint blobs. Make sure the dabs are packed close to one another, but there should still be some white space between the dabs. As you can see, these dabs are bigger than the stipples that you painted in the previous example. The final texture uses dry brushing. To create the dry brush texture, load up your brush with lots of pigment. Make sure that the paint to water ratio is roughly 90% pigment to about 10% water. Essentially, you want the brush to be mostly dry because it's the dryness of the bristles that creates the dry brush texture from which it gets its name. The texture will appear rough, coarse, and uneven due to the lack of water in the bristles. Now, you'll probably need to adjust the paint to water ratio to make sure that the brush retains the same consistency. Alright, the final watercolor warm-up exercise is painting value scales. The goal here is to paint quickly and effortlessly so that you don't overthink the painting process, so just let go and let flow. To get started, load up your medium round brush with any pigment of your choice. You're going to paint from light to dark, so make sure at the beginning that the paint to water ratio is roughly only 10% paint to 90% water. This way, the pigment will appear diluted and therefore super light. Paint the lightest value in a circle on your watercolor paper. Altogether, each scale will have five circles. Next. Add a bit more pigment to your brush so that the paint to water ratio is roughly 20% paint to 80% water. Paint the second value next to the first value. Third, add a little more pigment to your brush to darken the pigment. Now you're painting a medium value that's somewhere between light and dark. Paint this circle beside the second circle. You should start to see a smooth gradation forming. Fourth. Add more pigment to your brush. Now the paint to water ratio should be roughly 60% pigment to 40% water. Paint the fourth circle beside the third circle. Fifth, add even more pigment to your brush and lay down the darkest value. It's the fifth and last circle so it needs to look darker than all the other values in your scale. Congratulations, you've completed a value scale. For additional practice, repeat these same steps to create two more value scales. In the example on screen, I painted a second value scale using an orangey-red color, and I repeated the exact same steps that I just told you. I just experimented with a very different pigment so that I could see how it contrasts with that Payne's Gray color that I used in the first example. For the third and final row, I challenged myself to paint from dark to light in the last value scale. I used a light green color and I thought it was a lot of fun figuring out the paint to water ratio in reverse. Now that you're all warmed up, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and then click the video on screen so that you can be taken to a super easy and super fun watercolor painting tutorial. I'll see you in the next video.